Today on Forbes, this AI startup from Harvard students is arming soldiers for electronic warfare. In 2021, while perfecting their technology for detecting military communications and jamming, Alex Wolf, Ben Harp, and Isaac Stroll beta tested their work on a civilian population, their Harvard classmates. The engineering students built a few dozen prototypes of small, low-cost radio sensors and asked their friends to put them in their rooms, then walked around campus talking on handheld radios to refine their detection algorithms. Wolf recalled, quote, We had some very funny looks from some of our classmates. The company they founded while seniors at Harvard, Distributed Spectrum, is now getting some come-hither looks from national security agencies and investors. The trio say they've won $7 million in contracts over the past year from the Department of Defense and an intelligence agency they can't name. On March 18th, they announced that they've raised $25 million in a Series A funding round led by the venture capital firms Conviction and Shield Capital, and the tech entrepreneur and investor Nat Friedman. Distributed Spectrum's radio frequency detection technology impressed retired Army General Stanley McChrystal, who commanded U.S. and international forces in Afghanistan. He views them as a cheaper, more nimble alternative to the bulky, multi-million dollar equipment from companies like Raytheon and L3 Harris that the military has long relied on. McChrystal, who is advising Distributed Spectrum and has invested in the company, said, quote, Because it's inexpensive and you can just put it everywhere, it's going to allow you to cover things you could never cover before. Harp, who is 26 years old, and Wolf and Stroll, who are 25, say their sensors, the smallest of which weighs under a pound and is the size of a thin stack of cocktail napkins, contain about $1,500 to $2,000 worth of commercial hardware, including software-defined radios and power-sipping NVIDIA Jetson mini-computers. Outfitted with AI algorithms that automatically identify signals and pinpoint where they're coming from, the devices promise to give soldiers in the field an awareness of the threats around them without the need for highly trained signals intelligence officers to interpret the data. Wolf, the CEO of the startup, which is now based in New York City, said, quote, There's a huge need to understand, hey, I'm detecting something out there. What is it? Is it a threat to me? That need is perhaps most visible in Ukraine, where an intense, invisible battle is being waged with radio waves. Russian and Ukrainian soldiers communicate with cell phones and handheld radios. Bombs and missiles are guided to their targets by satellite signals. And soldiers wearing first-person view goggles remotely pilot explosive-laden drones. Meanwhile, electronic warfare specialists blast out radio noise to jam their enemies' communications or spoof their guidance systems. Both sides are constantly changing their transmission and jamming techniques at a speed that outmatches the abilities of traditional automated detection systems that are based on libraries of signal patterns that can take weeks to update. It's a preview to what U.S. troops could face in a war with an advanced adversary like China, and one that makes it clear signals intelligence officers will have a far more difficult job than they did in Iraq and Afghanistan. Wolf said, quote, As we transition to great power competition at the scale of the entire Pacific Ocean, there's just no way that we're going to be able to have that level of understanding spread out across that large of an area. The only solution is to automate some of this. The early stage startup has landed development contracts with the Army, Air Force, and Navy for an array of applications, such as soldier portable devices that offer alerts for approaching drones or nearby enemy cellular signals, stationary systems to monitor for activity around military bases, and networks of sensors to detect anomalies in the radio spectrum across wide areas that might be a tip-off to the presence of unfriendly forces. For full coverage, check out Jeremy Bogaski's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.